Hey everybody and welcome to the MP6X Overview. I wanted to take some time and go over this system in a little bit more in depth and kind of explain what it is. Now obviously most people who are looking at this that are macro photographers are probably looking at this setup and thinking this is not ideal. Uh, yeah, so I actually am on a monolithic foundation, so or monolithic slab foundation, so uh, there's very little vibrations to get transferred around. And I have everything raised up here just for the sake of this tutorial. Normally I don't have everything up this high, but what you're going to see is even on a setup like this, how smooth and clean of movements that we're getting and how little vibration actually happens. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the MP6X. This is not just a focus stacking system. This is an actual motion control system designed for macro photography. It takes things to limits that have never really been done before. So this is a truly new novel system. So the basic way it works is that you have a pedestal and this is controlled by the motors inside in order to move it up, down, left, right, in and out. So let's go over to the design of the MP6X. As you can see, it's basically kind of like, it looks like almost like a tissue box with a little pedestal that sits out of it. On top of that pedestal, you will put the subject and that pedestal will move around. It can move up, down, left, right, in, out, and rotate. And the system can also control two additional motors, one, which would be, in this case, the M1 focus rail, and two for another of a product that's gonna be coming out in the future, but is not ready to be shown yet. So we also have an input and two camera outputs. The camera outputs, so each can control a camera, or it can trigger another motion control device. I try to make these things as flexible as possible to integrate as with as many things as possible. Let's talk about the guts for a minute. So inside on each axis, it's got very high quality linear bearings too for each axis. And it uses a lead screw attached to a stepper motor in order to push the carriage front and back, left and right, up and down. What this results in is a very high level of accuracy with virtually zero backlash. The rotational element is spring loaded on the top in order to rein in any potential backlash there, resulting in a system that not only is it incredibly accurate, but it can reposition itself multiple times and put it back to wherever you want it and it will always hit that target down to levels where if you're filming with a 50 time magnification lens it's not a problem as you see right now what we have on the m1 rail is an a7r3 this is the laua aragon lens set up at a 10 time magnification for this demo i didn't really see much of a reason to go beyond this i wanted to keep things a little bit easier to control uh, however most of the time when i am testing this system out i do use the 50 time magnification to ensure that the movements and positional accuracy of everything is just dead on every time the casing is made out of a thermal plastic called abs gf25 this is basically an abs plastic that has long glass fibers that are embedded within the filament. So when it's layering down those layers, you get ABS on the outside to get that maximum amount of layer bonding with, an a with a glass fiber core, which gives it excellent, excellent level of structural strength. This is an engineering grade plastic and it's absolutely phenomenal stuff. The display is easy to see, plenty of information on there, get you wherever you need to go. The controller also does have hand grips on the back and an arca plate on the back. As you can see here, this is actually attached to a tripod, so I don't have to worry about it being on the table. If it is on the table, it does have little rubber uh, pads on the bottom in order to keep it from slipping and moving around. As you can see here, we got dedicated buttons. We have one test that'll trigger the camera. These are your menu of buttons, up, down, left, right, gets you to navigate, and then you have back and select. And then over here, you have all the positioning. We believe the use of tactile buttons is better than a touch screen in a situation like this, because on a touch screen, you have to be watching the screen in order to see where your hand placement is versus this. You can get used to that muscle memory really easy and be able to operate and move your subject while you're looking at the screen instead of the controller. So when you're going to first set up your system, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, get all your stuff plugged in for the MP6X. So as you see here, we have got a control cable going into the controller. You're going to want that in first before you power it up because there's an initialization process that goes between the controller and the MP6X in order for everything to work correctly. Then we also have this output here that is going over to the M1 focus rail. The auxiliary port is for a new product coming out a little bit later. Right now, we're just going to be using the focus. And on the back is a USB port. 
Now on the controller, when you first start, you're going to be greeted with a page that's going to tell you what the firmware is, and then it's going to come over and take you to the main page. On here you have four different shooting modes. You have macro photography, photogrammetry, hyperstack, and tiling pano. Macro stacking is exactly what you would expect. It's a traditional style of uh, macro stacking. Then you also have photogrammetry if you want to create digital assets, or even if you want to do uh, 360 degree spins of subjects, uh, is very handy for that as well. Hyperstack is the process of taking multiple multiple focus stacks in order to combine them together to create a video. And tiling pano is to map out a larger area in, in order to get high magnification small tiles that can all be stitched together later to create giant mosaics. Down on the next page, we have several other different movement modes, uh, step move, rotate mode and measure and then we also have settings and we'll go through all of these here in a minute. But let's go ahead and I just want to kind of show you how you would set up a macro stack. So this is a very simple process. You just select macro stack and the way that this system is built out, it's going to guide you through the setup on everything. It's not just going to give you a list of options that you put in and then you just tell it what to do and hope that it's going to do what you want. This is going to guide you in a process through you know you're going to get exactly what you're looking for. So as you can see here, the first start out macro stacking is going to tell you to position the subject. So let's go ahead and position this guy. And first thing I want to show is see how fast this moves. This is because right now this is set up for kind of a one-to-one -one magnification. Uh, being 10 to 1 means that smaller movements go by a lot faster and we're going to want to slow that down. So we have mag up and mag down. So mag means magnification. Kind of think of it this way. If you're shooting at a 20 time magnification, you're going to want to tone all the motors down so things move at a very slow pace uh, or else it's just going to go whipping by the screen. So we're, we're at a 10 time magnification. So let's just go ahead and increase this to 10. And now watch the movement. As you can see, it's very smooth, it's very steady, and it's very damped. And this gives you ability of setting your subject wherever you want it. And this is the focus rail moving, or we can also move the Y axis and achieve a similar thing. In fact, let's just kind of play around with this a second. I wanna focus in on this little guy here. What is this thing? It's a, looks like a foot, an antenna or a foot, something like that, maybe a piece of the part of the mandible. But if you want to do a focus stack on this, we're just going to go ahead and go back. And like I said, you go into the ma focus or macro stacking and you position your subject where you want it. And then you're going to set the near focus. So we're just going to bring the camera forward and backwards and look. Looks like this would be about our near point. So I'm going to hit select. And now I'm going to move over to the next page and we're going to go set the far focus. As you can see, go out to the far and hit select that set and now we can go and we can determine how many images we want in the stack it'll tell you how many microns you're going to be moving per each step so let's think about a nomenclature here for a second one of the things that gets confusing with this is that we have a stepper motor and the stepper motor will take one step and one step will either be 0.9 or uh, 1.8 degrees so it's either going to be 200 steps all the way around or 400 steps all the way around. And then you have, uh, then you have micro stepping, which you can do where you're basically cutting those up into the smaller chunks. And uh, all those words about step are going to get a little bit confusing because when you also think about step in the world of macro step is the distance, the distance that you're moving between each image. So if you're going to do a 10 micron step, you're going to move 10 microns between each images, each image. So when we're talking about motor steps, I'm going to try to make sure I'm referring to it as a motor step versus if I'm using just the term step, that means that we are actually talking about the focus stacking step. So not to be confused. So in this case, it says 13 microns per step. So, uh, and that's going to be 50 images in this stack. If I want to increase the number of images, I can, I can increase and decrease. If I want to directly set it, I can hit select. And I can say, I want to do 113 image, uh, images in the stack. And it's going to come out and it's going to say we're at 5.78 micro, uh, microns per step. Okay. So you can set it however you want. You can also set this up to where you're just directly setting in the number of microns. If you don't want to set the number of images, this is a user preference type thing. Once you have that set up, it says ready to stack. You hit begin. Uh, I don't want to begin it because the camera is set up and I don't want to trigger the camera because I am recording with it. But what it's going to do is it's going to back up to the originating spot and then it's going to start taking those images as it moves forward. 
And if, while you're running it, you can always pause it by hitting select. Or if you want to cancel it, you can hit back and you can cancel out. And if you restart it, it will move everything back to the proper positioning and restart. So let's go ahead and go back. And I just want to show you that. And also, if you're setting up, I also built in the ability. So say I want to check the near focus, I think. Did I get that right? I just want to confirm. I can go to the set near focus page and hit go to, and it moved it to the near focus position. If I move to the far focus position, uh, or set far focus and hit go to, it'll send it to the far focus position. So you can verify how this is uh, set up once you have it. So now we're gonna go back up and we have a couple of different options here. I'm gonna be putting out some tutorials later on how to do all these shooting modes. So we're just gonna kind of play around a little bit. We're not really gonna set any of these up. But photogrammetry, if you go in here, this is the one where you're gonna do like a 3D scan of something. You position the subject wherever you want it. You hit select. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your near focus. Then you set your far focus. And then you're gonna tell how many images in a stack. And then you're going to tell it the number of angles. So in this case, if you're just scanning an object in order to do a 3D uh, model of it, you're going to want to do one about every 10 images. However, if you want to do a full 360 of a subject and do, you know, kind of capture a spin, you can always put it at 360 and it will shoot every single degree all the way around it perfectly. So that's your uh, photogrammetry. Let's back out of there. Okay, and next is going to be hyperstack. You're going to select that, and this works kind of the same way as everything else. It's going to be a guided process. So the first thing it's going to do is say, you want to set your first keyframe. So say we want to kind of move this guy over, uh, and we're just going to hit select, and we're going to position on keyframe one. Then we're going to go over set the near and the far focus like we had in the past. And then we also get, now we're going to select keyframe two. Now keyframe two, I might actually just be doing a rotation on this guy and maybe bring it up a little bit and maybe sh uh, send him forward a little. And then that's going to be our second rotation. I can hit select to confirm that. So now if I want to go back and say, wait, where was my first position? I go back to keyframe one, I hit go to, and it's going to go ahead and reposition it back to that place. I can also check my uh, focus points because we already had those set. Uh, do you go too far? It's already there. So let's check near and then there's near. So you can kind of confirm everything as you go through. Um, once you have your keyframe one and two, you tell how, how many stacks, and then it shows video length. So this will calculate how long the video is gonna be based off how many stacks you're taking. The number of stacks is gonna be the number of frames. So if you're doing 300 stacks, that's going to be a 10 second video. Um, and you can increase and de decrease this with up and down. You can also hit select in order to directly enter that information. And then we have the number of images per stack. We already went over that. Then we have the number of images per in the, we, have, we have the number of images in the stack. We already went over that. And then for the review, in this case, it's going to take 33,900 images. So in this case, when we, I'm using an A7R3 and it's got a silent shooting mode where it doesn't actually engage the shutter, just pulls it right off the sensor. Uh, I highly recommend shooting like that. I don't know if anybody really wants to put 33,000 images on their camera, but uh, if you're going to be using a silent shooting mode, it makes that much simpler. And then once you're ready, you just go ahead and hit start and it'll start running. Now in something like a 33,000 image, you're looking about 14, 15 hours. So um, give it some time. We're going to go ahead and back out and we're going to go back into the menu and we're going to look at tiling pano, same kind of thing. Now with the, with the pentagram, macro photography gets a little bit weird because sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what your magnification is and what your field of view is. Um, so you don't really have the ability to just kind of enter that into this. So what we do is we look at the existing frame and we kind of map it out for this. So as you see, when it first starts up, it says, well, let's go ahead and back up because I think I hit select. We're going to go down to tiling pano. Well, normally it'll tell you to set it and it's going to make you set it, but we already have it set. So I'm just going to go ahead and do select to edit. So what, this is what you're first going to be greeted with shift frame 50% uh, horizontally. So you're going to look at something that's in the middle of the frame and then you're just going to move it until it is at the edge of the frame and hit select. Now horizontal is set. Then we're going to do the same with vertical. Fifth, shift the frame 50% vertically. So 
I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this back in and we're gonna move this up and we're gonna move this guy about uh, the middle of the screen all the way to the top. So right about there, hit select. Now the system understands the field of view that you have and it'll be able to do the calculations. So the next portion is you're gonna wanna set the top left and this has already been put in because, you know, I don't, anybody who's done all these tutorials, you probably do it like five times trying to get it right. So hopefully this is the last time I have to do this this morning. But you're going to set the position to the upper left of the, uh, of the imaging area. So if you look at your subject here, what you're going to be looking for is like, say you have a 35 millimeter frame size you want to map out. You're going to go to the top left. You want that in front of the camera. So you're going to bring the subject down and put them over to the right. And then it's going to ask you to do the uh, lower right, in which case you're going to be uh, moving it. But you're going to be looking at the perception from what you can see in the camera screen. So when you're moving it to the upper left of the imaging, you want to see that you're up to the left of the subject. And then when you do the bottom, you want to do down to the right of the subject. And then once you have all that confirmed, it is actually going to calculate out how many tiles do across. And then when you're ready, you just hit confirm and it'll go through it. So those are the main four shooting modes. Here we have uh, three more additional modes and I'll go over these real quick. This one is called step mode. And this one, basically you tell it how many steps you want it to move. And then when you move these buttons, it works like a bump. So if I move it down, each time I hit this, it's moving 100 steps. Now, once again, this is 100 motor steps. And it'll tell you here how many microns that it's moving on the X and Y, and how many microns it's moving on the Z. So we're moving 39 microns on the Z, 31.25 on the Y at 100 steps. And as you see, well, that's forward and backwards. So mostly it's up and down, left and right is what you notice on here. Uh, and it can also do rotate as well. So that's pretty much how that is. Now, if you want, we can come in here, we can edit that number of steps. We can go like 10 steps, in which case we're only moving three microns at a time. And as I move this, you'll see that the movement is incredibly small and we're at 10 time macro, even at 50 time macro, uh, these movements <laughs> still look pretty small. So uh, you can take this all the way down to one step, which is 0.31 microns in the X and Y or 0.4 microns on the up and down per step. So it's moving, it's just really kind of hard to make that out at this point because it's moving at such a tiny amount. A uh, higher magnification that would become a lot more obvious. So we're going to back out of step move and we're going to move down to rotate mode. Now this one, you just tell it how far you want it to spin and it'll spin. And this is good for like video work and stuff like that. So if I want to go in and change this directly, I can hit select and I can take this down to whatever I want maybe down to 360 degrees. If I use the up and down buttons, it'll add in, add or subtract 90 degrees at a time. So if you want to do another full spin, you just hit until you get, well, this is uh, two full spins here, 720 degrees. And then the speed is controlled by the magnification. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring this down and we're just going to do one full rotation at, uh, we're going to go uh, speed two. And when you're ready, you just say either clockwise or clockwise, you just hit that button and then it is gonna do a full rotation. Once it starts, it's gonna run until it stops. So there is no cancel on this uh, because I wanted this to be as absolutely smooth as possible. So you're programming it and it's running and it's no longer gonna be pulling the motors or uh, I'm sorry, it's no longer going to be pulling the buttons on the controller to see if anything new has been pressed. Um, so you can increase that, decrease that to whatever you want. You can set whatever speed range. If you're just doing video 360s, this is an excellent way to do it. Then we also have the measure mode, and this is a fun little thing. So let's say we want to say we want to measure this thing a little bit. Let me increase the magnification to slow this down. And say we want to measure, I want to measure how far it is from the bottom of this thing to the top. So I'm gonna go into the measure mode. I'm gonna move it to point one. So let's go ahead and bring this up. I'm gonna, I've got a little crosshair right in the center of my camera that I'm looking at. And I'm gonna tell it that this is point one. And now I'm gonna move it to point two. So I'm gonna lower this down 
and I'm gonna kind of see where the end of this part is. So that looks like that, that segment is right about there. I'm gonna hit select, and it tells me that the distance that I moved, and on this one I only moved the z-axis so you don't see anything on the x, it's 804 microns from end to end on that the part that we were just looking at. If I also move on the x, because I want to do like a diagonal movement or something, it actually creates, uh, calculates out the hypotenuse. Uh, but it'll go ahead, so it'll do the, the x distance moved, the, y di uh, the z distance moved, or I guess that'd be the X from left to right, the Z up and down, and then the hypotenuse, the distance between one and the other. So that's the uh, measurement mode. All right, so now let's go through the settings. So there's a lot of stuff to cover in here, uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in. So we're gonna hit select. Uh, the first option we have here is time lapse. So if you wanna do like a, a hyper stack, but you wanna make it into a time lapse, you would go in here and you just hit select on this and you can tell it exactly what your intervals wanna be in seconds, minutes, and hours. So this has a limit of 99 hours, 99 minutes, and 99 seconds. Uh, generally, you're not gonna be going that long, especially in a hyper stack, unless it's gonna take you like something like three years to film it. So uh, if you wanna do like a 10 minute interval, you just up this to 10 and hit select, and then now it's gonna be at a 10 minute interval, so it'll take 10 minutes between, image, uh, between stacks. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because we are not gonna be using that. Oops. Hit select, and it says time lapse now off when it's at zero. Settle delay, this is how long after the camera moves that it's gonna allow for that movement to dissipate any vibrations or anything that happens. So it moves and it waits the settle delay, then it triggers the camera. So it, depending on the size of your camera setup, you might not need very much settle delay. I try to use the just the smallest amount that I can that'll give me you know, steady performance. So 1500 is generally pretty good. It might be a little bit longer than I need in most cases, but that's kind of what, that's just a good default. And then you have shoot delay. This is how long after it triggers the camera it's gonna delay before the next movement. So if you're doing a one second uh, exposure or like a three second exposure, long exposure, you're gonna wanna come in here and bump this up quite a bit. So these are measured in uh, milliseconds, uh, as is, as is uh, the, uh, as is the settle delay, they're all done in milliseconds. So shoot delay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take that up to 500. And we're just gonna leave it there. Trigger duration, this is how long it's telling the camera to take the image, okay? So the reason you might wanna increase this is if you're using in-camera focus stacking because you wanna just wrap through it really fast um, and, and, you, and you don't mind just having one-to-one -one magnification, I mean, you can save a ton of time. So trigger duration though, it might need a little bit of time to find that close point that you wanna start and shoot through. Um, I ran into this with some uh, cannons where I actually had to increase the trigger duration in order to give it enough time to acquire the focus where it needed to be, then it would wrap through those. Um, next page, oh yeah, and you can also use mag up and down to jump through pages. So you don't have to sit there and hit this for days on end to get all the way through it. So now we have your focus jog, focus check, and focus stack speed. The focus jog speed is this is the max speed that is gonna move when you're uh, jogging the focus. So let's see, well, I can't actually adjust it. And when you're in the settings menu, um, all of these are pretty much disabled while you're in settings. Uh, but if you increase this number, you slow down the speed because these are actually 50 milliseconds, but or actually 50 microseconds between each step pulse. Now that's motor step pulse, pulse right? Um, so 50 uh, is what I have set up as the current kind of a, a jog speed limit for the focus rail. Depending on your focus rail and what you're using, you might get something that's going to move a little bit quicker. You might need something that's going to go a little bit slower. So this is where you can go ahead and set that in. Focus check speed. So earlier I showed you, you can set your near focus and you can set your far focus and you can go back in between with the go to button. So with the uh, check speed, this is how long it's gonna take to get from uh, those two positions. Right now I have it set at 40. You might wanna have this set a lot low, slower. Generally, I think I normally have this set at about 150 because I wanna kinda slow that movement down because I'm trying to see you know, how much of the area is in focus at any given point to kind of give an idea of how many images I'm gonna to have to take if I don't know, if I'm not 
doing like super high magnifications where it's really best to use that calculator. Um, so that's the check speed. And then the focus stack speed, this is the speed of which it's moving when it's actually running the uh, routine. So uh, you wanna have this number higher because you wanna have a nice slow movement. If you have it really fast, it might just jerk uh, its way through. It might cause extra bouncing, extra vibrations. So that's the best way to eliminate vibrations from the movement of the camera during the focus routine is by slowing the stack speed. Then below that we have images per stack. This is your default. So it, 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 this is just a user preference that you can put in here. Um, I don't know why it says 113. That's not what I normally do. I'm just going to put this at 50 and leave it there. Uh, so that's going to be the default. Anytime I get up to that page on one of these, it's going to say 50 and it's going to start from there. So if I'm doing a lot of high magnification stuff and I'm usually starting about like 30 or, uh, or uh, you know, 100 or 200 stack images per stack, it's nice to just go ahead and have it in that ballpark and then you can tweak it when you get to that point. Uh, angles per scan, this is for the photogrammetry. Same kind of thing. Um, how many do I normally want it to have? Uh, you can change it right there when, when you need to, but I like to just have a, a good default in here. And I've been using this to do 360 degree scans of my subjects, uh, not 10 degree scans each, uh, for like uh, 3D assets. I've actually just been filming with it. So uh, I just leave it at 360. Mirror lockup delay. This is the mirror lockup feature. So if you're using an older DSLR, you have that large mirror assembly and that slaps up and then the shutter engage, uh, hits in order to take the picture. The lifting of the mirror mechanism can cause a vibration. So what this does is gives a chance where that'll lift up and it'll wait and then it'll trigger. So you're gonna have to set your camera up for mirror, del mirror lockup delay and it's gonna expect two pulses and this will do that. So if I set this for uh, 500, that means when it takes an image, it's going to it's going to lift up the mirror. It's going to give it half a second to settle down. Then it's going to trigger the camera and then the mirror will go back down. So uh, if you want to use mirror delay, this uh, this absolutely does support it. Calibrate rail. This is if you have your own focus rail or another focus rail, which I don't have the calculations built into it. All you go in here and you set in the pitch in microns per motor step. Uh, there is a calculation for this. It's in the manual. I'm not going to be going over this now. I will probably be doing a tutorial about this a little bit later though. So we're going to go down. Y-Stack disabled. So Y-Stack is a really interesting technique where you can actually don't even need a focus rail. You can just have your camera on the tripod and you can move the subject for the stacking. Now why would you want to do that? Well, it kind of depends. I mean, if you're really high magnification, and you've got a larger setup with bellows and like reverse rings and all these lenses and it just adds to the weight, especially at really high magnifications, you're gonna get a lot of vibration and bouncing as things are like moving. Even when you slow it down, you might still get a little bit of movement. So you might actually find it's a little bit easier to move the subject instead. So that's what Y stacking does. You just enable it or disable it. If you do enable it, these two buttons, the uh, Y up and down, no longer work, okay? Those go away. And focus will now move the subject, okay? So when you're setting it up, Y stack enabled or disabled, when you're looking through the camera and you're looking at the controller and you're setting it up, it all feels the same. It, it, it doesn't really, it, it just feels like you're doing the same thing the whole time. Uh, so why stack enabled is really handy. Now people do say a lot of people don't like to move the subject because they're worried about um, the, uh, the light moving uh, or the lights not moving with the subject that that might cause some problems. But honestly, if you're at a really high magnification, the distance that you're moving it really shouldn't be a problem unless you have some extremely hard, very directional like laser light. Uh, but if you have any level of diffusion, it, it's, it's not an issue. Uh, especially at high magnifications. Um, so we're gonna disable that. And then you have X, Y, Z, and rotate axis, reverse and normal, okay? Uh, if you wanna reverse the axis, you just hit, uh, you hit the select, and it'll swap the direction that happens when you jog it, and it'll swap direction that moves during all the functional uh, shooting modes as well. Um, we've also got, I think I skipped that. X, Y, Z, and R, enabled and disabled. If you just want to shut one of these axes down because you find yourself bumping into it and you don't want that to happen, uh, this is a way to do that. 
So I'm gonna go down to focus direction. Same thing, you can swap the direction of your focus rail. I have mine set at normal right now, but if I uh, built one or if, it, if like the wiring on like the Wii Macro or the Stack Shot or something else is, uh, doesn't, it doesn't jive and it's backwards, you can come in here and flip that around. These are your focus micro steps. Normally, we're just going to keep that at 16 because we want that high resolution. However, uh, depending on your needs, if you feel that you need to take this down to full step, half step, quarter step, uh, you have all those options. We also have the same thing. You can reverse the speed of the auxiliary motor and uh, max speed for the auxiliary motor. And the auxiliary motor also is beholden to the Mac. Uh, so you can increase and decrease the speed, uh, like kind of like that global speed limit right there. Going down, camera faces. Right now, I don't know why it says that. We should be on right. Camera faces right. So if the camera is facing the front of the system, that's going to be camera faces front. Now for this demo, I wanted to have the front of the system aimed towards the camera, but I wanted everything to still move the same way. So if I'm moving X and, uh, X and Y and Z, that X is now forward and backwards from this perspective because now I'm shooting the side. So it'll kind of reverse flip and swap the motors around in order to make sure that it still looks the same in the, in the display no matter what. So right now I'm saying camera faces right is facing the right of the enclosure. You can face the rear, the left, or the front. This also means that when you're setting up your uh, macro rig, uh, you know, sometimes just there's not a lot of room for things and things get kind of bulky. So it might be handy to have the cables coming out this side or maybe the other side or the back side. Uh, so you're not limited to just shooting directly at the system. Photogrammetry, we have semi-auto. Semi and auto. Semi is going to be the default. Auto is not going to be used yet. Um, in fact, the code's kind of restricted to prevent that from even happening. Um, auto is going to happen because eventually we're going to be able to move the camera from a lower position to a straight position to an upper position, all automated. So if you're going to be doing a photogrammetry and you want to get like a, you know, uh, 36 angles at a lower pitch and then a medium pitch and a higher pitch. You don't have to move the thing around yourself after each uh, 360 spin. You can have it set up to where it'll do the low and then come up and do the medium and then come up and do the high and it'll just be fully automated. So automated. But right now, since that, that uh, uh, part is not done or released yet, we're just sticking with semi. Hyperstack, frames per second. This is the, where I showed you earlier when I said we had 300 frames, it was gonna be a 10 second video. Um, generally, I prefer to work with 30 frames per second, but if you want, you can change this to 50, 60, 24, 25, or 30. So all the normal formats you have there. Um, down here on rail type, um, right now it says stack shot. We have the stack shot, we have the Wii Macro, custom, earlier I showed you, you can put that pitch information in there. That would be custom if you're using your own custom rail. Um, and then we also have M1 for the uh, M1 focusing rail. Priority. Now this is how you want to set up your step length, okay? Um, Personally, I'm kind of a fan of setting it up by determining the number of images. And when I do that, it tells me exactly in microns what the step length is gonna be. But if you want, you can also set it in microns. The only problem that I see with this is that none of these focusing systems can do one micron. They can do close to one micron. And it's not that they're gonna be all varied uh, ahead and back. It's just the mechanics and the limitations of the mechanics and the stepper motor drivers mean that right now I can move 0.3125 microns per motor step. So the closest I can get is like 9.3 something uh, or a 0.93 microns. I can't actually do one micron and neither can any other system out there. So if you're telling it one micron or half a micron, you have to take that number with a grain of salt because the mechanics don't allow for that. So if you're gonna be uh, wanting to do like 30 or 40 microns for a shot, and that's just the way that you work, that is a perfectly fine way to do it. Uh, arguably, is probably better than setting the number of images. I just prefer to set the number of images because it tells me exactly what my step length is gonna be, not an approximation or not like a target goal. Um, I'm also thinking about adding up a motor step selection so you tell it how many motor steps and it'll tell you exactly how many microns. Uh, or 
submicrons that it's going to be moving every time. So uh, stack mode, this is a fun one. So linear, this is your traditional type way of doing a focus stack. So you're gonna set your near and far, the camera's gonna rewind to the near focus position and then it's gonna advance out to the far position as it takes images throughout. Now when it's done, it's gonna reset back and then repeat that. So uh, I built a robot for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They were doing a lot of photogrammetry, uh, focus stack photogrammetry, and one of the uh, requests they had was to modify it to where it could shoot out and then instead of just returning and then advancing out, it would shoot it in reverse and then shoot it out and then shoot it in. So you're no longer having that period of time that takes for the cameras to move back to their positions. It doesn't sound like that's actually a lot of time, but it adds up over time. It really does. So if I'm going to be doing a hyper stack or something, I might very well put it on linear. And instead of taking four hour, uh, 14 hours, it might take 12 hours. And that extra two hours of uh, time saving is actually pretty nice. So that's, that's what that is. So you have linear and zigzag. Preload. This is a feature that's going to preload for us against this camera before it starts its routine, okay? Um, it doesn't do this on every movement back and forth, but just before it starts. So if I have a thousand uh, step preload, and that's a thousand motor step preload, it's actually, when, I, when it comes out, it resets the camera and it's moving back to the focus uh, start position, it's gonna overshoot that a thousand steps, turn it around and then push it back in. And at that point, all the force is already loaded up in there. So that helps with reduce any potential um, inconsistencies with your first few steps as, as the system's trying to build up that uh, pressure to break that static uh, like bearing torque, okay? Or that, bearing, uh, that static bearing friction it's gonna go ahead and preload that pressure against it. So that's gonna give you more accurate movements in the beginning. If uh, you're doing, uh, you know, if you're moving like a thousand or a, a thousand um, uh, micrometers or like one millimeter, you know, per, it, it's not really gonna make a difference. It's only really gonna make a difference at really high magnifications. Um, so that's what, that's what preload is. And if you turn this down to zero, it'll just be off. Uh, generally, I just keep it on at about a thousand. Then we also have auto advance. So this is uh, probably going to confuse people initially. What auto advance is, it has to do with the menu system. So as you see, when I was setting things up, it would, it would start out and you say, enter the near focus. I'd enter it and then I'd push the right button to advance to the next page. And then I'd set the far focus and then I'd hit the right button to advance to the next page. What auto advance does is, when you hit so when you um, like set the near position and you hit select, it locks that in and automatically moves over to the next page. So it's just an auto advance through the menu if that's something that you prefer to do. Backlash compensation, that's what this is. Uh, up and down moves you through there. Uh, you hit enter, you can increase or decrease the backlash. This backlash compensation will engage every time the, uh, the, the motor shift direction. So as I was mentioning earlier with backlash, this is not a, a true zero backlash system because that doesn't exist. This is functionally zero backlash because you're not going to be able to detect it at all. However, I don't know about your focus rail, whatever you're using for that might have some backlash. Uh, the M1 actually has an anti-backlash nut built into it in order to prevent backlash from happening. But you might find that uh, giving it like two or three uh, motor steps um, is enough to like uh, fix whatever it is. So I've, I've also got another uh, focus rail from another brand and I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but it's got noticeable backlash, like about half a millimeter of backlash. Uh, it, it's just the, the backlash nut on it is just not very high quality. And if I'm doing very high magnification, it makes it very difficult to do. So I'll go in and I'll program that and it just cleans that right up for me. Um, in fact, when, when you're using it, you don't even notice that that backlash composition is happening because it happens so quickly. So it's also available to put in the X, Y, Z, and R. That's not really needed. Um, however, if you're, who knows, you might be at 100 times magnification and you might see that it's, uh, you know, got about like half a micron worth of backlash at that point. You can correct for that if you need to in here. Go ahead and back out of there. 
Factory default, uh, you hit select, and if you just hold select down, when that hits 500, it will boom, reflash everything in here and uh, go everything back to the default settings. I recommend doing this every time you're gonna be doing a code update because if a new feature is being added into it, it might have some prerequisite data that needs to be built into there and it might not be built into there yet. So either you're gonna to have to go in and use that feature in order to get those values loaded in there or you can just do a factory reset and it'll pop all those in. I just recommend before doing it, pay attention to anything that you had set up. Uh, if you have a certain motor speed you like, or if you're a uh, backlash compensation settings, you have something in there, just make a note of those because you're gonna need to put those back in there. So we're gonna go ahead and back out of there. Max X, Y, and Z. This is uh, the absolute max speed for the X, Y, and Z motors. So right now I have that set at 60. Um, I try to tune these systems to be able to have the highest speed they possibly can, okay? But the faster you're moving the stepper, the lower the torque that it has. And if there's any kind of a issue, any kind of like a slight um, tension anywhere, it might end up causing it to stall or, you know. So by having this in here, uh, it just prevents that from happening. So this is probably not something that you're gonna need to use at all. And then this one, unused. So that's the settings menu. And I gotta say, this is just a really fun system to play around with. Everything is smooth. It just runs gorgeous. Can't say enough about it. Anyway, I hope that this was useful, uh, give you an idea of uh, this system. Now, like I said, this is an ecosystem. This is something that is always going to be in development. Um, there will be more firmware updates. Um, I don't want that to scare people off. The update process is very easy. And if there's a feature or something like that you want built in, let me know. If you feel that there is something that needs to be improved, let me know. Um, you know, if you find a bug or anything like that, I do everything I can to test this out as thoroughly as possible in order to make sure that there's no little display errors or bugs or anything like that. But it's, uh, you know, eventually one, a couple of those things might end up squeaking by. Uh, so just let me know. But. Being a, an ecosystem that is currently being developed, there is room for expansion and growth with this that you're not gonna see with most other systems. Uh, like I said, here soon we're gonna be able to move the entire camera all the way up from the top, all the way down from low, looking at the subject while keeping it dead smack in the middle. Um, we've got other little uh, ideas and things that we're gonna be bringing out with this, other shooting modes. Uh, one thing I wanna develop is a left eye, right eye kind of shooting so you can Get, the, get those images and kind of let your eyes just go lax and you see the 3D version of it, you know, things like that. There's all kinds of little things that can be done to, uh, to uh, uh, build this up even further. But I hope this was useful. I hope that uh, this kind of explains how this system works, what it is. It truly is a unique new system. There's nothing else like it on the market. Uh, very proud of what we created here. and. Uh, uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to go ahead and start knocking out some more tutorial videos on focus stacking, photogrammetry, hyper stacking, the individual shooting modes, and get all those uh, done here soon too. I think I'm just going to go take a break for now because I have been talking for a long time. Thank you everybody and uh, have a wonderful day.